So, Ding, how's it been for you, being New South Wales Australian of the Year? Well, uh, it's a great honour for me, and I think, uh, taking it from uh, my own perspective as a person born in Africa, born in South Sudan, came here as a migrant, and be able to get that award, uh, it, it does not only It, it may feel good to me, but to the wider audience, the, the country as a whole, and uh, the outsiders, uh, people from uh, United States, New Zealand, other people, uh, will be able to see Australia as a country that has taken a step too far, too far ahead of other people, to be able to recognize somebody who came to this country 19 years ago and be able to honor them and give them an award. It is a great image to, to the general world, to the people of the world. Mm. I am a prince of New South as well, based on 2017. So <laughs> I'm now ruling, I'm, I'm the ruler. Yeah, the general. ruler of New South Wales. I'm royal Wales. of the New South for 2017. That's fantastic, and Ding. Yes. It was a very diverse yeah. mix of people. It this is a year. community yeah, and, in general. And, a sense yeah. of community. So that's how I see it. And I'm enjoying my hat for your this crown. Year. You mean? My crown. Yeah. My crown. Yeah. Yep. Uh, my crown. So, so it was, well, I can't say that I feel like a prince or a princess. <laughs> I'm way too old to be either of those. <laughs> yeah. um, it, it certainly felt. Uh, Good to be recognised and acknowledged, to have my work acknowledged. Mm -hmm. um, it's shown me a side of life, uh, some that's not so good, and, and a side of life that's exceptional as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that as Australians, the best thing we can do is celebrate each other. Yes. And we're not doing that enough in Australia. Australians are shy about celebrating each other and they're shy about putting their hand in their pocket yes. for philanthropy. Yes. And I would love things like these awards to open some of that up because there's a lot of wealth in this country that could be put into good causes. Mm. But it's been um, an honour to be South Australian, Australian of the Year. So I guess I could wear a tiara <laughs> for a moment. <laughs> I went ahead and do exactly do the opposite mm. and succeeded in what I mentioned in my Australia Day speech that I will open a foundation for my brother, mm. which I did. Mm. And I pursued that cause and got three scholars now. Fantastic. Three scholars and and they, they're all migrants, uh, two Iraqs, I think one Afghans. Fantastic. And it is for Australian people and Australian people uh, come in different colours, come they in do. different shape, come in different community, different mm. language. And therefore, I won in that respect and they lost. So, it, it, it gave me more, more strength to challenge myself that I can do it. And, mm. of course, I, I'm targeting 200 scholarship. Of course. And once I get that, I think I'll be able to say yes. I think I pay my debt. <laughs> I pay my debt to this society. I see if yeah. you've got any gift at all, you, you, the world deserves to have the benefit of your gifts. Yes, and I, I think the hand that just keep giving, you just have to give. I, I think that what actually this award has given me, just given me more strength to challenge myself that I was, uh, that award uh, belong, I deserve that award. Mm. and that I can show that I can basically contribute more to this country and I can do more uh, in general to Australian people. Oh, actually, I'd yeah, agree I with so. I wouldn't have said that a while ago, <laughs> but I would say it's given me more strength. And I was already a strong, resilient yes. person, so sometimes I've likened myself. I grew up in a very poor rural community in South Australia with very little water, no electricity, uh, very little money, um, an hour and a half bus trip each way to school. So 
nowhere near as tough as your upbringing, but still tough. Tough. Um, Mine, you, you're quite right. You know, not much cash in my life from uh, a lot for of a Australian long time. are poor. A and lot of so, Australian are so poor. So I still just yeah. feel like that kid from yes. the farm, trying to do the right thing. But I, I've likened myself to a skittle, so I've been through lots of different challenges, health and other. Yeah. And I don't know if you've ever been ten, ten pin bowling. Yes, so yes, when you, yes, when you I, bowl yes. down the alley yeah, I do and that. you know, you bowl, bowl the skittles over and they, and they pop terrible. back up. I'm terrible. That's that. me. I just <laughs> pop back up. So you can knock me down however many times you like. That's actually something I like about Uni Wollongong yeah. is that it really supports a diversity of yes, students yes. and it supports disabilities. So I study here as a person with quite profound cognitive disabilities um, yeah. and Uni Wollongong supports that really well. Actually, that's, uh, that's one of the reasons I choose to study here. And when I did my master's here, I actually choose for that reason, to this unit for the, for the reason that um, uh, it's quite remote. And also, uh, there's so many uh, people from even African yeah, background. really diverse. Yeah, that way, yeah. yeah. And I feel like, oh, I'm going to do it. Mm. And I think for, I didn't feel like I had anything to prove at all when I first came to this uni. I was just almost, uh, almost accepted. I just, uh, was just straightforward. I love going to school, speaking to children, and it wasn't my obligation when I, when I wasn't nominated, I would mm. still do it. But after I was nominated, it became almost my obligation. To make sure to to make sure that I visit school, and tell the children the importance of education, mm. and the importance of making sure that uh, they they look at uh, the country where they live in, uh, in in not not in not in terms of other people's views, but look at them in terms of what in the front of them, mm. the culture in front of them. Uh, they're all Australian, different colours, and they should start enjoying playing mm. cricket eating barbecue, doing everything that they do as Australian together. Yeah, yeah. I, I think because uh, the award gives you mm. some opportunities and opens some doors that maybe would have been harder to open, mm. there's a huge responsibility to make sure you, that you really do use that wisely, yeah. that opportunity wisely, and, and make sure that, that whatever your mission is, and, and you, know, you and I were on mm. very different um, Pathways, yes, but still really, really important to make sure that, that it's a responsibility. Yeah, bigger one, bigger yeah. one. Uh, Volunteering yes, is yes. really important. Yeah, for meaning and purpose yep. in your life. Yeah, so there should be um, one day of everyone volunteering. Mm. It should be one holiday, one single holiday, volunteering holiday, where we all volunteer, go and mow the lawn for elderly and go and clean up dogs and dog pounds, visit sick people in hospital, maybe one day, mm. maybe. Find something that you like and go and do it with somebody that needed it. That would be good to have that day. That can be your next petition. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about a job. It's all about creating that job. Mm. It's about being a mentor to them, being somebody who they can say, oh yes, if Dan can do it, yes, I can do it. Mm. Just you need that encouragement. You need kids. Kids are exciting. They are, they don't discriminate. And, and one of the things, too, that I focus on to, to, develop, on, uh, to develop on that part of, of education is discrimination at school. The discrimination at school is basically happened because they never seen somebody that is dark like me, some of the school. Mm and they never have an African student in their school, generally. But because of my role as New South Wales Australian of the Year, it become, I become so visible that some of these kids, I often go and talk to them and say, I'm now, I'm now a student, I'm actually your classmate in, the, in, in this particular school. So by saying that I'm a classmate now, um, sitting in a school with them, you're, you're it, it allow them that opening, uh, open their mind to be able to say, well, oh yeah, we can receive mm -hmm. some kids or some African kids or some people from uh, a different country. We can receive them and we can accommodate them because 
dengue is not bad at all. It, you know, it's He's one of us. Seems to be one of us. Yeah. And uh, this is uh, this is a kind of a tolerance that we need to teach. And, and actually, here. that's a bit how I feel. I'm an mm. example of a person with dementia. Yes. Who can contribute significantly. Yes. To our community. Oh, great. And mm -hmm. the discrimination, the stigma, the loss of human rights, mm. the being locked away in secure units simply because you've got a disease. Yes. Not because you're a criminal. The only other people we lock up in the Western world are criminals, and yet we're locking people up with dementia all around the world. And the OECD in 2015 did a massive report on uh, addressing dementia, the mm. OECD response. And 67 years after the UN declaration was signed, they declared that dementia receives the worst treatment of any disease in the developed world. Not the undeveloped world yeah. or developing world, but the developed world. So that's Australia, that's the UK, that's yeah. Canada, that's America. So that for me, to be able to try and change that, mm -hmm. and it's harder to change that, and it's harder to educate a Western world who already thinks they're doing it well. And the impact yeah. that I can have in low and middle income countries is faster than what yes. I can have here. Yeah. Because they're starting from <laughs> yes. a base of yeah. almost nothing. Nothing, yes. Um, but it's been good to be able to uh, reinforce that message mm. that actually what mm. we think we're doing in the Western world mm. is complete breach of human rights. I think my treasured memory probably is today um, at the Illawarra Forum and there were two young women who have had to place their mum into a nursing home recently. And um, they heard about me because of winning the South Australian of the Year mm. Award, so they'd read my books. Yeah. Um, and they... I, I think that just being able to help real people whose real lives are affected by dementia. Mm. I mean, yes, I may be impacting dementia in the academic education sector. I might be impacting it in the nursing or... Impacting real people is actually what it's about for me. So, so being able to provide services and support for real people with dementia through Dementia Alliance International and to be able to, in some strange way, support families who look after and love people with dementia. So that for me is the most, being able to do more of that um, has been the best part of it for me. I, I think for me is, uh, is the daily um, email that I receive from people around the world that I actually inspire them. Mm. I, uh, I continue to be resilient mm. uh, despite what happened to me and that I've changed something in, in their life. Or uh, people actually decided to go back to university and study, yeah. Yeah, study well, again. There are now five age. people with dementia in yes. Australia at university. Yes. Yes. And uh, it's so, there's so many positive impact that, mm. uh, you uh, that I receive and uh, comment every day, uh, every time I'm on a train and uh, I meet a new person that recognised me and we started yeah, to chat. You're a bit more recognisable than uh, me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, and you're a bit taller. Yes, but I actually said um, I'm, I'm too visible for everyone. Yeah. And because I'm too visible, it's, it's amplifying me as well. <laughs> it amplifies my position mm. as near South Australian of the Year and it allows people, to, people that, uh, that want to approach me Mm. They now can approach me and we yeah. start chat normally. 